Welcome to Apothecary Talks. I'm Dr. Jillian Stansbury. This series is part of a collection of small recordings aimed at teaching beginner herbalists how to put together good herbal formulas based on learning the actions of herbs. Mastering the actions of herbs is one of the first steps to becoming an herbal clinician. One of the tasks is to learn Materia Medica. That means the medical materials are a list of different herbs, A through Z, and their niche specific indications and their primary actions, antispasmodics and alteratives and diuretics and so on, that enable us to choose amongst all of the different herbs available to put together effective formulas. So mastering these actions is is an important step and this particular segment is going to focus on diaphoretics. Diaphoretics are agents that promote sweating or raise body temperature or help um, stimulate heat release in the body and this is not something we need on an everyday basis the way we tend to use alteratives and adaptogens and some of those nutritive tonifying herbs of which other segments have focused on. Diaphoretics are more um, reserved for treating infections or people who have chi deficiency and instead of mounting a fever when they're ill become cold and deficient. Um, sometimes that happens in elderly patients with poor circulation or poor metabolic function. Sometimes it happens as just a constitutional deficiency state, what might be noted in Chinese medicine as qi deficiency. And diaphoretics can help us to temporarily stimulate some heat in the body. And many of these herbs have not been really studied at the present time through the lens of modern scientific rate. But what is known about them is many will bring more blood to the surface of the body and be vasodilating to the, uh, to the cutaneous blood vessels that can make your skin be flushed or bring a little heat and circulation to the surface. Some of them might very temporarily and briefly actually stimulate metabolic rate through ATP effects and metabolic activities. Some might briefly alter the set point of your body's thermostat through hypothalamic activity. So regardless of the mechanism of action, the basic concept is diaphoretics promote sweating. Another term for this is a sudorific. It's a synonym for a diaphoretic, agents that promote sweating or sudorifics. So diaphoretics are not needed as often as alteratives or adaptogens, but can be very useful in treating mucus congestion in cold, damp circumstances. That's another concept from Chinese medicine is the concept of dampness. When people have so much water in the body, and I don't literally mean just the fluids um, in your digestive system or in your tissues, but it's a tendency to tissue congestion or mucus formation. Another old vocabulary word for that is catar, a cataral state. And that mucus is a good breeding ground for bacteria. A typical presentation is that viruses will initially stimulate an immune response and mucus release from mucous membranes and we start to have itchy eyes and runny nose and congestion in the throat or a post nasal drip and then all that bogginess what they refer to in Chinese medicine as dampness creates the perfect breeding ground or ecosystem for secondary bacterial infections to ensue. And there is a pattern for many people with this cold, damp tendency, instead of being ill for a few days and having it burn out, get colder and more and more damp. And that's a breeding ground for the bacteria. And then a simple cold turns into a sore throat or a tonsillitis 
or a simple cold turns into a sinus infection or bronchitis or pneumonia that is very difficult to recover from and might last uh, for several weeks before people recover or maybe there's a tendency to need antibiotics to treat pneumonia for win simple winter colds and flus that tend to linger or become deeper and more congested over a week's time rather than simply recovering with your body's own recuperative powers. So the concept of a diaphoretic is sometimes to give your body a little bit of oomph to mount a fever, to dry up excessive mucus, to bring fire and heat to those cold, damp circumstances. So diaphoretics are sometimes also used to, quote, break a fever or induce a temporary artificial fever. And for those prone to dampness, cataro states, sometimes adding a diaphoretic treatment in the very first day or two of an onset of a new illness can help break that cycle of things going deeper and turning into tonsillitis, sinusitis, bronchitis, and pneumonia. Sometimes this is combined with saunas and your feet in hot water or various different hydrotherapy techniques or balneotherapy, another old word meaning bath therapy, to boost the hot waters, heating effects on the body or saunas and other kinds of hydrotherapy techniques to artificially raise the body's temperature in this combined together diaphoretics and hot water to have a fairly powerful antimicrobial, anti-infective effect. And the body in fact mounts a fever to help us fight infections. A fever does a lot of good and is our friend. So we never want to drive down a fever unless it's dangerously high. And in many cases, we want to help the body make a powerful fever, especially those in whom our infections linger and turn in, into contaral states. So in many cases, our diaphoretic herbs, here we have Achelia, that's yarrow, Sambucus, that's the elder flower. In this case, berries are also used as a medicine, but the diaphoretic plant part might be drinking the lovely and tasty elderflower tea. Nepeta cataria, that's catnip, and is often used for infections in children. Ginger, of course, can feel warming just on your tongue and drinking a few cups of hot ginger tea. Many people uh, note its effects. And armoracea is the Latin word for horseradish. And indeed, many people, um, their nose will start dripping immediately after ingesting horseradish. So it has a real affinity for the sinuses, for those whose simple colds or rhinoviruses turn into sinus infections. Having a little bit of fresh horseradish in hot water with lemon and honey is a wonderful rescue remedy. So these herbs might work the best if you drink them in a hot bath. I call this a fever bath to make a little pot of yarrow tea, catnip tea, a little bit of horseradish and lemon, a little bit of elderflower, lemon and catnip all together. Um, you can blend these and take them to the edge of your tub and try to drink two or three cups in fairly rapid succession within about a um, five to 15 minute period while in a hot bathtub to promote at least a half an hour of a febrile state. So these are especially useful um, for acute infections to prevent colds and flu from turning into worse lasting infections that might require antibiotics or other interventions. There's an old concept in herbal medicine referred to as open the amunctories. The amunctories are the organs of elimination. And we often think of the bowels and the liver of kidneys of eliminating wastes, and indeed they do. But don't forget that our skin is a secondary organ of elimination. And we actually eliminate quite a lot through the skin, through our sweat and a lot of things that are kind of invisible to us um, are, are excreted through the sweat and through the skin. So stimulating the sweat function Function, the amunctory function of the skin can help detox the body and be part of a cleanse or a fast as well. You can look up more information in my textbooks, Herbal Formularies for Health Professionals, and find some specific information and formulas, as well as look up these individual herbs. 
You can also accompany me on some of my ethnobotany field courses in the Amazon, bghealingarts.apothecary at gmail.com is my email for more information. And you can also visit my website, healingartsapothecary.org, where I have a number of free recordings, podcasts, PDFs to download, beginner files, and a blog. Thanks so much for watching Apothecary Talks.